am I am I on your television set now? You're on. Indeed. You're on. You're live. Oh, wonderful! Well, well, thank you very much for having me. Uh, my name is Verma Supreme, and uh, I am from the internet. And uh, I have generally been uh, known as a uh, highly respected political satirist, uh, beloved by millions around the world. And uh, of course, I've generally been known to promote the farcical, satirical, and uh, biting uh, platforms of uh, mandatory toothbrushing laws, uh, referencing, of course, the nanny state and, and the secret dental police and the dental re-education centers, referencing uh, uh, the horrifying uh, government clampdowns that uh, we may very well experience sometime, if not presently. Uh, zombie power, alternative energy, of course, is very important. And uh, naturally, uh, one of the most important uh, uh, issues that I've been known for, of course, in the past has been uh, free ponies for all Americans. And of course, it is a federal pony identification system. You must have your pony with you at all times. So that's at a fact. Times. I guess I'm generally known as the, uh, uh, the candidate from the Internet who uh, runs for president while wearing a rubber boot on his head. And uh, that is true. And that is a fact. Uh, in fact, uh, one of the wonderful things about running for president is it is indeed a self-declarative statement. Uh, once you say the magic words, I am running for president, it becomes an indisputable fact. And uh, no one can dispute that. It, it, it becomes real. <laughs> uh, you can say, no, you're not. And you could, and I would say, yes, I am. And, and so, uh, yes. And so you have actually been running for a very long time, uh, was, uh, even in the early 80s. And this has been continuously ongoing. So one of the questions I want to ask you is... Uh, what have you really learned along the way, especially as you've ran numerous th uh, different uh, times for, uh, obviously, the office of president? But uh, looking at other the main, uh, looking at the main parties, what have you seen change along the way? Um, just it's more of the same, quite frankly. It just goes on and on, and never ends, and never stops. And uh, the government and the people running for the government, uh, they, they all have uh, essentially the more or less the the same. Uh, spectrum. I, I, of course, the the mainstream candidates are have a very small uh, bandwidth of things that they're representing, and, and usually it's a, a more of a, for their corporate uh, overlords. And um, you know, has that really changed? I, I guess. I mean, in in the time uh, that I've been running, I guess uh, Citizens United came into being, uh, so there was uh, so much more uh, money in the process, so much more uh, corporatism involved in the process. Uh, but ultimately, the, the retail nature of uh, campaigns uh, pretty much remains the same. Of course, I've uh, utilized the New Hampshire primary uh, as a platform for many years, uh, of course, because it, uh, essentially every duopoly candidate uh, that is running uh, shows up there. It's a small state. Everybody has their campaign headquarters, their campaign buses, their campaign staffs, and their campaign events. And uh, it, it attracts, like, because it's the first in the nation primary, it attracts a vast amount of uh, media interest from around the globe. And I have been able to parlay that into a certain level of uh, notoriety uh, during the past 30 years uh, that actually allows me uh, uh, the opportunity to make a, a somewhat legitimate offer uh, to the Libertarian Party uh, for my services as a candidate. Um, and so that's a, a very different thing this year. I mean, uh, arguably and, and straight up, uh, all previous 30 years worth of campaigning uh, for the presidency was indeed uh, facetious. I mean, it, it wasn't real, uh, but this election year is indeed very different. Uh, Desiree Lindsay, my campaign manager from Texas, reached out over a year ago and asked me if I was interested in running a more serious type of campaign. And I agreed to that. And... Um, and here I am, uh, 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 if not a front runner, at least in the running and have a fairly uh, serious shot of uh, perhaps getting the nomination for the Libertarian Party. I have come in first in the New Hampshire primary. I came in first in the Massachusetts primary, tied for second in the um, California primary and took third in the North Carolina primary. Now, if anybody had to ask me uh, a couple of years back, uh, Vermin, do you know that in 2020, you will be actually a real candidate running for a real political party, and that party was Libertarian Party. 
I would have said, you're crazy. No way in hell. I don't see that happening. Um, because, of course, uh, I, I come from a, a left anarchist perspective. Uh, um, I, 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 you know, cut my teeth on Kropotkin and Emma Goldman and, and people of that nature. Uh, I have always been uh, consider myself an anarchist uh, ever, ever since I've started really thinking about it. And um, I've just been developing this communication strategy, the, the, the magical boot that I wear upon my head uh, that has allowed me to communicate with millions of people around the world. Uh, these talking points that have such resonance and, and reference such things as toothbrushes and ponies. And um, it, it really has captured the imagination of many people across the political spectrum, I might add. I mean, uh, because my initial viral moment uh, was perceived to be nonpartisan, that it was uh, making more fun of the, the system uh, than any particular individual or party. Uh, it was very well received across uh, the political spectrum, from hard right to hard left to, to places I don't even like to be at, you know. Uh, <laughs> but that's just the nature of uh, mass media and uh, social media and what have you. All right, Paul. And, uh, of course, uh, it, it's very interesting because, you know, Berman, uh, you, you, were, uh, you were or are a left anarchist, and and what are you doing involved in the Libertarian Party? And uh, it took me a long time uh, to reach this point. Um, but it took, once again, uh, for many years, I, I was buying into the stereotypes. I was buying into, um, you know, the, these, this prejudice. I, I, I was experiencing prejudice against this concept. You know, Libertarians are all a bunch of greedy old white dudes who got theirs. And, and they don't care if you got yours. And they don't care about poor people. And and all of these things, but uh, as I became more active within the party and then uh, met many more libertarians and started working them on a much deeper level, um, I found that many of these uh, stereotypes and misconceptions uh, were simply not true. Um, I, I think a, a thing that uh, a lot of people do not immediately understand is that the Libertarian Party is not a right-leaning monolith. And, and uh, it took a while for me to even figure that out. It is actually, it has its own left-right spectrum within the party. Um, you know, when, when I point out to people that there even exists a libertarian socialist caucus, uh, it really blows uh, some people's minds. They have to reassess what they think uh, that party is. And ultimately, um, it is the, the party that is all, all about self-ownership. It is about non-aggression, which totally dovetails with my uh, nonviolent direct action activism for, for many years. And it's uh, all about uh, voluntary human interaction. It's really the only political party that welcomes anarchists, number one, which is a pretty amazing thing in and of itself. And uh, it's, a, it's a party of anarchists and minarchists uh, actively working to uh, minimize the state and the, the government control in your life and uh, working towards a post-state society, uh, which is very utopian, because I, I think that left uh, anarchists and right anarchists, you know, we're all working towards this post-state uh, society. We may have very inter uh, different ideas of what it might end up looking like, uh, but we're, we are working towards a, a vision. And I think a lot of the, the Venn diagrams, a lot of the issues that, uh, that we all possess, uh, overlaps quite a bit. Um, you know, like I say, I, my left anarchist beliefs uh, dovetailed very nicely uh, with the Libertarian Party platform. Uh, okay. I, I would recommend that anybody look up lp.org slash platform. It's uh, that's, strictly that's really fascinating. Actually, the, the, there's, a, there's a lot of depth to the, the actual uh, political leanings that you have, despite what, I guess, sort of the the affect that your campaign has, like your magical boot and, and your large toothbrush and, and the, your pony IDs. I'm curious, uh, there's a candidate that runs in the UK that draws a lot of attention to sort of the absurdity around their political system in the way that you've drawn attention to the absurdity in the American political system. I wonder if you've had any interaction in the past with um, Lord Buckethead. Uh, it is funny that you should ask. And the answer is yes. In fact, I have uh, Lord Buckethead's endorsement. Um, that particular space alien, I, I, I don't want to guess what his gender may or may not be, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, being a space alien and all. Um, yeah. But he, 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 I was actually very lucky enough uh, to be able to arrange for Lord Buckethead himself 
uh, to work with me up in the New Hampshire primary uh, this year. And wow. there's some great photos and some great video. And uh, it was uh, myself and Lord Buckethead and uh, two live ponies. Uh, we were making the scene up there. Um, I had Lord Buckethead in a in a video arcade, and I actually had him playing uh, Space Invaders. <laughs> so that was that was super exciting, and um, for sure. And of course, you have the the monster raving loony party going on in uh, in uh, the UK, also uh, a long running uh, satirical party. But once again, um, you know, I I have am generally understood to be a satirical candidate. And yet here I am running a, a serious campaign for uh, a national party. Yeah. And that has created a, a little bit of confusion and a, a little bit of a, a quite a bit of opposition, frankly, uh, within the party of people who uh, are afraid that uh, a humorous candidate on the top of the ticket will reflect badly on all of their hard work. Well, let's look at Joe Biden, for example. I mean, let's the guy doesn't have a cognitive thought in his mind or is he, he's having a hard time actually making coherent sentences, yet somehow everyone's rallying around him as this person that's going to take on Trump and Donald Trump. Well, he's a character upon himself. But there's something that I don't think a lot of people realize is that you were an activist against uh, nuclear weapons, and you were. Uh, can you at least explain like some of your history involved in that, in, in regards to? Um, sure, sure. I, I'll I'll give you a quick thumbnail if I can cram it all in. Um, yes, I, I took on the name Vermin Supreme in '86. Um, I was running night a couple nightclubs down there, um, okay, and so I, I became. Uh, I knew a lot of the people around, knew a lot of the bands, and at one point decided that I would run for mayor out of complete and utter boredom. There's not a political part about it at all. Um, in the meantime, I sort of fried out in Baltimore, um, but at that, at all at that same moment, uh, the, the, the Great Peace March for Nuclear Global Disarmament rolled into town. Now, that was a uh, peace march uh, that had crossed the country from L.A. to D.C., and uh, I had heard about it, but uh, when I had the opportunity to see this thing, it was amazing. It was a, a, a mobile city. It had, every, it had the entire infrastructure that was required to move uh, 5,000 people down the road. And uh, they had uh, porta potty trucks. They had kitchen trailers. They had water trailers. They had schools, uh, buses that were acting as actual schools for the kids. Um, they had semi-trailer trucks uh, hauling the people's equipment and tents. And so it was this amazing process. And it inspired me so hard to see these many people using this format of, of a physical expression of free assembly. Um, that I jumped on board and I met them and, uh, and met the, the anarchists that uh, spun off and they started doing a smaller version uh, called Seeds of Peace. And uh, at that time, I started also attending uh, national political uh, demonstrations, um, started attending the national rainbow gatherings. Are you familiar with the uh, rainbow gatherings of Living, Love and Light? Um, uh, no. Can you please elaborate? A oh, little OK, bit? I'm going to give you a quick thumbnail. Uh, imagine, if you will, 4000 uh, people out in the woods sitting in concentric circles. It's a national forest. Um, they're waiting for dinner. All of a sudden, 100 different kitchens in the woods send out five gallon buckets of food. Everybody is served food. All of a sudden, all these people go around giving information about the daily events. There's 10 or 20,000 people out in the woods every year, the first week in July. Hmm. Um, there are there's like uh, talent shows going on. So people are being informed about that. Um, there are safety information, things going on about that. And so um, uh, the magic hat goes around. People put their hat, their money in the hat because it's a non-commercial event. They can't buy anything. So they have to. It's a spiritual money laundering, if you will. Money goes to the center of the circle, goes to the banking council. Uh, the, the banking council counts the money, announces how much money they, they made. Anybody can be in the banking council. It's open to all. The books are open. Uh, the next morning, the kitchen council, 100 representatives from all the kitchens meet up. It's a spokes council. They go through the, kit, the list of things they need to do, want to do. They put in their shopping list. They interface with supply council. They get the money from banking council, goes out to town, brings it back. Food gets cooked, and it gets over and over again. There's also miles of uh, water pipe. Uh, we tap springs, so there's all this uh, black hose piping. And essentially, it is where I learned everything about uh, practical anarchism. It is a temporary autonomous zone that occurs every year. And everything that occurs, everything that needs to occur, from cutting vegetables to chopping firewood to digging shitters, uh, happens because councils happen, because people voluntarily associate with each other and get the job done. And so that is where I learned about practical anarchism. That is where I learned to be a clown for the first several years. That is also where I learned to be a security person 
because we also provide security because anything can happen at these events, right? And we don't hire security. We are security. Uh, so we take care of our own and, and do what we can. So that's where I learned about that. So then I was going to the Nevada nuclear test site. Yes, we were out there with the American peace test and we were having massive uh, encampments out there and massive demonstrations, uh, thousands, if not tens of thousands of people walking into the desert to try and uh, uh, disrupt the nuclear testing that was going on there, backcountry actions, massive civil disobedience. Uh, it, that is where I started to learn about uh, peacekeeping and uh, keeping uh, crowds safe in political demonstrations. Also, at that time, um, you know, I started bringing it back down to the Rainbow Gathering where I was doing security. One of the things we would provide for people is a cop walk. We would walk with the cops. So I would spend eight hour shifts walking with like half a dozen state troopers from Alabama or any other state and propagandizing them and deconstructing what they were experiencing and uh in smoothing any sort of troubles out between them and the hippies. And, uh, and I did this knowing that, uh, and making fun of them and bringing in the humor and bringing in the comedy and uh, joking on them and joking with them and, and joking, you know, making fun of them in front of the people. And uh, so that I brought, was able to bring this skill set out into riot world. Uh, where is it, there is that line of protesters, there is that line of cops, and in between it's a vacuum. And I discovered that I was able to enter that vacuum, that no person's land, and with my bullhorn and humor and jokes, that I could uh, make it a safer space and decrease the, the uh, violence and give important medical information to the people and crowd information. And I could read crowd control manuals to the cops to let them know what I expect uh, from my oppressors, which is nothing less than professional behavior. And uh, so, yes, I've been a, a political activist, a First Amendment and free assembly a facilitator for many years. Uh, you know, the, the running for president thing, you know, that, that's pretty simple. It's pretty easy. I found a little niche um, and I exploited it. And um, and once again, that has put me to to where I am now, uh, where, the, where I'm the elder statesman of wingnuts, if you will. And uh, I've got a little uh, gravitas and in levity and uh so i'm trying to bring the message of love and, and compassion uh to the libertarian party i mean it, it is a, a really amazing party and uh, and it does have that spectrum it's it's right. not what you think it might be all right and uh daniel has a question for you so as always hardlands media we believe in the hardest hitting questions and we're looking for some breaking news i'm very interested you talk about you want to have some uh zombies doing uh power plants walking chasing the brains I'm very interested yes. to know what universe are these zombies from? Are these Walking Dead zombies? Are these uh, Light of the Nimming Dead zombies? Are these Dead Space zombies? I need to know what universe you plan to get your zombies from. Well, uh, naturally, the, the Romero uh, universe, the, 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 sh the shambling uh, type of zombies, I think they are probably uh, best suited. Um, and, and they're much easier to capture, I think. Um, you know, the... the, the uh, 38 or 39 days zombies that they, they run too fast i think they would be uh, problematic in catching although uh and of course then you'd have to figure out how to strap them into the devices and and the and the, the gear ratio because they're running so fast it might be a problem uh yeah producing electricity well now, at least we're you, able to clarify that <laughs> yes if, if you read my book uh i pony blueprint for a new america uh it's all covered in there uh okay. the the, uh, the electron the electrode implants that are used to uh to sync up the zombies, if you will, uh, because, you know, once you have a, uh, you know, a big platoon of them and the giant turbines all at once, once you scale it up, yeah, there, there's, there's issues. Now, of course, let, let's jump to uh, ballot access. It's a very uh, difficult thing at this yep. moment in time. Yes. Yep. Um, it's getting harder for third parties, as you can imagine, with the uh, COVID restrictions and uh, people not being able to go out and petition for ballots or and people being afraid to sign ballots or all of those things. Um, so we definitely have a challenge uh, that we've had like no other. And uh, uh, some in my crew are putting out a uh, hashtag open the ballots, hashtag open the ballots. It's just starting up, uh, but it is a, an attempt to uh, interface with uh, all the various uh, boards of election and, uh, and asking them flat out to, uh, to waive their signature requirements for this particular election and uh, give access to the uh, to the. Uh, candidates and uh, the third parties that uh, are, will, will be facing insurmountable odds uh, under the current uh, situation. 
Right. And I actually would like to ask you a question in regards to that, because sadly, here in the United States, we have a two party system that's owned by the corporations. And if the Greens or Libertarians or Socialists or any other uh, political party wants to run, they have to get 15 percent in the national polls, to even get on the debate stage. And to be federally recognized by the United States, they have to get 5 percent in the general election. Um, what are some of your initial concerns about election integrity? Because during the last election cycle, uh, when Dr. Jill Stein uh, was actually calling for uh, the uh, recount for votes, uh, it turns out that the Greens and Libertarians actually got some more votes that weren't even counted during the first time uh, when the, the votes were all uh, tallied up when Trump became president. Uh, it's not surprising at all. I, I've uh, heard from a number of my uh, supporters who uh, attempted to vote for me in various states, uh, states that they had libertarian ballots, and the poll workers uh, simply did would not allow them or told them they had no choice uh, but to vote for Democrat and, or Republican. Mm -hmm. So uh, obviously, uh, you know, election integrity is certainly a very big issue in this day and age. Um, I would like to see perhaps uh, some sort of a blockchain uh, technology uh, invoked into the system and or some sort of a paper ballot trail backup. Um, I think that would be a, a really groovy thing. Um, but of course, uh, you know, the, the, the status quo and the election boards are, are going to make it as uh, difficult as, as possible. Mm. Um, but it is uh, the belief of uh, my campaign uh, staff that uh, it, it, it is possible that I may be the, the best shot uh, for the Libertarian Party to perhaps uh, reach that 5% of the, uh, of the national general election. Uh, that would be historic uh, if, that, if that could be done, because I think now more than ever, no matter how you look at this, uh, the United States desperately needs to change its two-party system. We seem to be repeating 2016 all over again, and that's uh, rather disheartening to, to really think about. We actually have some of our uh, listeners yeah. uh, want to ask you some questions. So, yeah, some of our listeners sure. actually gave you a question. Uh, one, uh, it's an unknown, unknown space pioneer. She gave us a $5 super chat. All right, Vermin, I'm on board with the mandatory pony. But what about the resources to care for it? Question mark. Well, yes. I, well, keep it in mind that they are purely <laughs> hypothetical, theoretical, and imaginary. I would have to say <laughs> that uh, absolutely uh, it's totally included. If we're promising things, sure, why not? But, uh, of course, in, in my book, I do point out the, uh, the mandated victory gardens. Um, of course, because we are rapidly uh, approaching uh, the, uh, perhaps the collapse of the state or if not, at least the uh, change in society. And uh, I think that would be a certainly a, a, a wonderful thing. Of course, the pony based economy uh, has always been about a, pos a post fossil fuel economy. Uh, it's uh, been it, and once again, it's, it's just a, it's a thought exercise, if you will. Um, you know, if we can spend all these money on the wars and, and uh, destruction, well, why don't we have ponies? Why can't we afford ponies? And and uh, different people have broken down the, the figures. And the fact is we can afford ponies. Um, Actually, even to add on to that, if we really look at it, uh, just last week, the United States government spent one point five trillion dollars put in the stock market and disappeared in 20 minutes. So I absolutely. would have to say, you know, yeah. I think we can afford ponies for every single American if we're willing to throw away cash to see it disappear in 20 minutes. Yeah, I think there's a lot of uh, <laughs> veracity I mean, the, the to that. The current system, you know, as as you all have been pointing out, is uh, essentially it's a, it's a little bit of a house of cards. It's a, it's a very fragile infrastructure ultimately because it has so many moving parts and uh, and uh, it's become so centralized that once there's a, a glitch in one section of it, 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 it sort of ripples right across uh whereas i think uh, uh decentralization and localization are, are very important things uh, building up our families stronger families and stronger communities uh will ultimately lessen the need for government I, i've been uh, go plugging away for uh you know my entire anarchist career that the the only way that we will be able to disengage uh, from this system from this government is to be able to help and pr uh, provide the services uh, that the, the government seems to try and deliver, but does so in such a, a terrible fashion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I am really all about uh, helping one another and mutual aid and, uh, you know, seeing what needs to be done and, and trying to make it done without having to, uh, you know, crawl to the government to solve these problems when uh, we the people uh, 
could probably stick our minds together and make it happen, as we're seeing in the midst of this crisis, as we see uh, uh, all sorts of uh, mutual aid and citizens coming together to try and uh, help one another get through this crisis. All right. Now, two other things real quick. Uh, first, we got a super chat from Chris Rogers, $10, who basically has stated, pledge to vote for Vermin Supreme in the general election against Biden and Trump. Sign the petition, www.change.org slash vote for vermin so there we go and then i think another note too um uh from ann franklin two dollar super chat i'm planning a bigger garden this spring i uh, myself am also a gardener i like to grow tomatoes and everything else so there we go as i have lectured to my team before and many <laughs> numerous rare occasions but i think uh i want to ask you a two-part question this will be the final question we'll ask you and again we're very grateful to have you on the show uh first part is Right now, Biden, he's nowhere to be seen. He's right now hiding or resting. He's or charging work. his batteries. Yeah, charging his batteries, whatever he's doing. And then you have Donald Trump, uh, President Donald Trump, basically berating reporters, asking them, hey, what do you want to say to scared Americans right now that are afraid? So I think for you, Vermin Supreme, what I want to ask you is, uh, what do you want to say to Americans right now that are actually afraid right now to even get involved in this election cycle or just afraid in general uh, of this current situation? And then number two, where can our viewers and subscribers learn more about you uh, online and on social media? There is nothing to fear but fear itself. <laughs> Thank you. That's uh, very uh, the most presidential thing I could think of saying, really. Um, well, w once again, I, I think we have to uh, assess the reality of the situation as best we can and uh, deal with it accordingly. And uh, we, we just have to realize that although we can't be in, in close personal proximity uh that we can still be very supportive of one another uh we can still care for one another and we can still show and share our love for one another and that uh we as a people really must take this opportunity to to reach out to to all of our friends and loved ones and uh you know assure them that they are loved and uh because it, it, these are obviously very scary times i mean They've been scary times. I mean, whoa, are we going to be, our, what's going to get us first? The total environmental collapse of global warming? Or is it going to be the, the massive fascist government clampdown? Mm -hmm. And then they throw us this curveball. I was not expecting that. I don't um, think any of us were. So I, I think it just uh, really makes us want to reassess where we are, where we're going, what we're doing, and uh, what our priorities are. And I certainly... Uh, welcome you to help me figure these things out. Uh, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, communication, a lot of discussion mm -hmm. and uh, people, uh, you know, only, you know, don't let the anxiety uh, take over, you know, uh, help the am amount of uh, fear or being afraid or whatever, you know, that that's a, a, a fair, a fair emotional response uh, to these events, uh, but you must uh, keep it in perspective and uh, do what you can to keep your, your own self occupied uh, this is a perfect uh, opportunity to uh, try a creative endeavor. It's a great opportunity to, to catch up on some books and um, and all, all the things that you've been meaning to do in all this time. Uh, now is a great time to do it. You've got some free time. Um, hopefully, uh, we'll make it all through. And, um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's getting a little, little funny, but uh, let's do what we do and care for one another. And uh, if we have to uh, rise up and, uh, you know, demand uh demand certain things uh to keep us going on that's what we will have to do all right and then where can people find you online and on social media well i am on the facebook uh, at uh vermin supreme for president it is a blue check mark uh, official thing uh i am at vermin supreme on twitter uh, i've got the vermin supreme for president on the instagram and uh the real at the real vermin supreme on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. We <laughs> and um, uh, all of these things. Uh, and you should definitely go to my campaign website, vermin supreme2020.com. Um, that will let you know everything that you possibly need to know about my campaign. It will link you over to the uh, uh, Libertarian Party platform, which I highly recommend you, you check it out. I mean, I have a feeling that you will agree with more than you think you might agree with. I mean, it is, it is the party of anti-war. It is the party of personal responsibility. It supports sex workers. It supports the government out of abortion. It, it, it's, it, there's just a lot there that may very well resonate with you as a citizen. You may be a libertarian and not even know it. 
And so uh, thank you very much. I appreciate this opportunity. Oh, and no uh, uh, together we will ride our zombies into a <laughs> pony powered future. <laughs> That's right, friends. Well, Vermin Supreme, thank you so much for joining Hard Lens Media. I want to give a special shout out to our audience. Again, thank you guys so much for joining us. Daniel, Paul, always great to have you guys here. Also, one but, more super chat from Ayana. Ayana. Ayana, please. $2. $2. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Nonetheless, we can, we all must work together to build a better future. So let us all keep pushing forward. Things will be different here at Hard Lens Media. Uh, we will be live streaming in our own homes for the time being. We're going to respect the, the at least the, the shelter in place the, order. The shelter in place order, but that doesn't mean we're not going away. We ask you guys to continue following along with us because this is not the end. This is just another step to the beginning, and we're not backing down. Peace, you guys, and take care. Thank you, and good luck with your campaign, Vermin. Thank you, thank you, sirs. We'll we'll be in touch. Hey, welcome to Hard Lens Media. We're Evolution of Manly, the show about the evolving ideas of what it means to be a man in today's society, and we are shooting here at the 99 Perspective Studio. You can see us and a bunch of other shows on their website, which is in the link in the description below. Yay. I forgot he said 15 seconds, so I think that first one is probably not even close to 15 seconds. That's all right.